Hi all, I have another fascinating instructive game of the current world chess champion Magnus Carlsen to show you today. This is against Sergei Karyakin. So this is in the Grand Chess Tour 2019. E4 from Sergei and Magnus plays the Sicilian defense. He's really been uh, popularizing the Sicilian defense recently. Knight f3, knight c6. We have an unusual move, knight c3. So what should we do about this move? White's usual choice traditionally has been d4 and also bishop b5 has enjoyed great uh, resurgences in popularity. But this one reserves the right of bishop b5 or d4 depending on what, white, um, what black does now. So say g6 then maybe d4 is a bit of fun for white. Maybe black doesn't want this kind of position or knight f6 bishop b5 could be used. So for example knight d4 e5 this position might be quite interesting uh, for white it's a uh, very interesting territory Magnus chose uh, chose here e5 so this locks down white's d4 move we have bishop c4 so the the hole on d5 is of interest to white can pieces strategically rearrange themselves for that d5 hole so to speak and also, uh, this move looks at that soft spot. If black's not careful here and plays a casual move like knight f6, then white can actually pounce with knight g5. This is very unpleasant for black. For example, d6 here, and this, this just gets extremely unpleasant. Nice advantage for white. So um, bishop e7 is the careful move to stop knight g5, to be able to play knight f6 and then castle to defend f7 with the rook. We have d3 d6 and now knight d2 this this is reminiscent of Steinitz he used to play games like this where castling has a downside slight downside of using up the f1 square here by not castling f1 can be used as a pivot to go into that sensitive d5 square so we have knight f6 knight f1 is this too sophisticated though this kind of thing Magnus plays knight d7 we have a3 preparing uh, to put the bishop back on a2 if needed. So knight b3 and the bishop goes, sorry, knight b6 and the bishop goes to a2. Black castles, knight e3. So the white pieces are in contact with this strategically important square, the d5 square. It seems a very neat idea, very neat conceptually uh, to make use of that. Bishop e6, knight cd5. We have bishop g5. Magnus determines that this dark square bishop might actually be uh, it might actually be good to take it off the board. It's not really doing much. It's kind of locked in its own pawn chain. And also there's another interesting aspect here of this dark square pawn chain. Could it be used as a kind of lure generally on the light squares to try and get a king side attack later if if white indulges too much in a light square strategy? Uh, so this bishop if more pawns are going to be put on dark squares that's also it's useful to get rid of this bishop so it's not incredibly bad later white castles uh, here h4 doesn't really help black's going to take on e3 anyway and then maybe if if the lock is released on that d5 then d5 from black gets a really comfortable game indeed so that'll be absolutely great there so white just castles here and magnus plays bishop takes e3 without any prompting f takes e3 this slightly weakens the king side only two pawns there it's slightly weaker okay it in increases the control of the d4 square though and it seems white in terms of central squares has uh you know more more advantage there in a way uh but the king has been slightly weakened we have knight e7 c4 and now f5 now that this Bishop is not really pinning this at all. There's no issue about the diagonal. F5 is played here. It's a safe time to play F5. Even offering, I mean, you may consider this paradoxical to offer white to undouble the pawns, but it reveals more exploitable weaknesses if E takes F5. So Bishop D2 was played, actually. So undoubling the pawns, you might think, is tempting. But Knight takes F5. This position is very nice, having a Knight on D4. And uh, yeah, that, that looks quite good for black. Uh, and here, if bishop d2, knight takes this position is also very nice. Black's got no problems there. So uh, we have bishop d2. And now bishop takes d5, so giving up both bishops. So white has 
uh, the bishop pair. This this bishop in particular doesn't seem to be doing much. Could it be liberated on on this diagonal later, or is it not going to be doing much? And black. Uh, so with the two knights playing like Shakurin, and pe perhaps you can argue a safer king in some respects. There's only two pawns around the king. We have knight d7. B4, trying to maybe open up the position in some way, but B6, and this is what I, I alluded to earlier, that black, because Mengs hasn't got the dark square bishop, he can afford this kind of draft strategy. It looks like drafts, all these, these pawns on dark squares, and it's a kind of a magnet in a way uh, to, if the opponent really considers light squares to be some sort of downside. I think it's kind of more more theoretical in nature, but there could be pieces lured to light squares like this bishop. It's not really doing much on a2. And in fact, the more pieces that come in to try and exploit kind of theoretical downsides, then the king's safety could actually be lessened. There's simply less resources to defend the king. And we see this indulgence now, bishop b3, it's start of an indulgence to try and get onto these light squares. Knight g6, Magnus is not worried about c6. This move portrays the idea that saying to the bishop, you know, come into c6, come into my light squares, and get your queen involved as well, because you know what? These knights <laughs> are heading for the king here, and in a very aggressive manner, potentially. It looks as though there's a technical problem, though, with f5. If ever the knight steps to f6, isn't a rook takes f5. So this is a fascinating position where these theoretical weaknesses on the light squares become a sort of uh, vehicle of mass distraction not destruction mass distraction of the white resources and it starts now to continue with bishop a4 so sergey is is seeing this as a legitimate downside to tap into but his resources are being used up with this and if it's not going to be that punishing for black then maybe it's just simply not worth it this insertion into the position and we've seen this with neural network games where leader has encouraged Stockfish's bishop to do a similar kind of entrenching. The problem is that there's there's some negatives here on king's safety. The rook moves to a dark square, and the queen is also distracted now with the lure of a pawn or something, it seems. Well, it seems technically that is is the expectation for knight b8 here to protect the a7 pawn, because knight f6 clearly looks unplayable because the rook takes f5. Well, Magnus actually, uh, guess what Magnus played if I give you five seconds to pause the video here black to play so this is a kind of mass distraction strategy based on what seems to be a plausible downside being offered to the opponent but is it theoretical all of this the light squares and the pressure on on the queen side what would you play here okay magnus actually plays knight f6 it seems rook takes f5 is on but uh, if we play knight b8 which does protect all the material then maybe e4, and in fact, this looks absolutely fine for white. Without this knight helping in some sort of attack, the bishop pair is going to start to weigh down, perhaps, in this position. White should be absolutely fine. Black can't really ever take on, on c6, because that would leave you know semi-open fold pressure and a big d5 square. So this, this looks equal. Uh, technically, it's equal. But Magnus's move now gives the idea that, yeah, actually... If we have both knights going for the opponent's king here, this is really, really, really interesting. And in this position, uh, so knight f6 was played. There's rook takes f f5, it seems, but actually b takes was played first. b takes c5. On rook takes f5, it seems fascinating, but um, but knight h4, this position is actually really, really dangerous with these two knights looking at these squares around the king together. Because also there's the possibility of queen g5, which is directly looking at g2. So, for example, this position, it's uh, very, very dangerous for the white king. For example, here, knight f3 check. And this, there's a tempo gain on the queen. And there's a back row weakness, which is exploited. So that is just one example of how it could be a total disaster for for white if he actually took on f5 here. If we look at this again with rook g5, then knight e4 double attacking the rook. And here queen f6 looking at f2 in the back row again. And here knight f2 forks the rook and queen. So this is another example of a total disaster. Uh, so... If we look at these lines again with rook f2, uh, 
if the rook had gone there then e4 and this seems really dangerous with the knights coming like this this bishop entrenched over here not helping the king at all the queen has got useful squares like e5 and g5 for example here this black's getting a big advantage in this position it's looking actually really nasty so it's fascinating stuff but b takes was played first and now rook takes f5 now Magnus this is a really really interesting position Magnus played e4 it seems uh stockfish uh, that I have believes black actually has a really really crushing move here not e4 but knight h4 let's have a look I mean, e4 is good but knight h4 believe it or not getting the knights to the fifth like this touching those squares around the king this position is fascinating and you might think well hang on okay I'm arguing there's a mass distraction uh, of these resources they're away from the king what's the big deal about these two knights can't you just kick away this g4 knight well if you play h3 guess what black plays in this position which shows the real power of black's attack here if I give you five seconds to pause the video okay queen g5 yeah, g2 is actually really, really difficult. This bishop on c6 is not helping g2. It's just cemented in there. It's far away from g2. Uh, so say g3, then knight f2. This is just crushing. Rook f3, then queen f5 looking at h3. It's just pretty murderous stuff. If we look at this again uh, with rook g5, then knight e4. We've seen some of these things before queen f6 knight f2 we've seen that theme a little bit before uh so here um yes it seems very very dangerous uh here if rook f1 uh, knight g4 and uh this is yeah you know, we get this position again if queen takes a7 just to show well what concretely is black doing here for g2 the concrete move is what you'd think in this position as an example okay knight f2 yeah just threatening the mate letting uh, the rook take there because this is just mating anyway with this mechanism so it's it's all mating if queen d1 instead trying to get bring the queen back here then here knight f2 again this mechanism is just hitting a uh, g2 any any g4 you know, there's all sorts of lovely stuff going on uh as well like taking on h3 um there's there's uh well if g4 we just actually take the queen anyway there's no time there's no time for anything so the threat of mate and hitting the queen is a killer here behold it's it's absolutely murderous so it shows the mass distraction strategy it's, it's too late to bring the the queen back and the bishop's still not helping so this position again is just crushing here this is the most incisive threatening rook f1 and then yeah it's hopeless so it seems knight h4 this is a very peculiar position where knight h4 is absolutely crushing absolutely Meng's played a really good move though as well e4 and still whipped up a great attack so queen c2 knight g4 it has some of the elements uh, so here the back row is a bit weak and looking at h2 and there's a neat little tactic here after h3 can you guess what Magnus played in this position okay knight takes e3 so all this with the bishop just looking you know at nothing on c6 so check and so it's not the bishop pair anymore and black's quite good on the dark squares d takes knight f4 it seems best might actually be just to snag that pawn when queen takes a3 i know it's a little bit boring uh yeah i mean this attack is not as ferocious as, as what stockfish saw but it's still a very very good position for black very easy for white to go wrong and white did go wrong uh it seems with queen b2 uh there might be an alternative here where the probably the best move is queen d1 probably so after knight e2 it looks scary you know there's there's the scariness to hit this position but uh, it seems as though with this bishop actually being able to get back resourcefully white might actually only suffer a small disadvantage here but uh yeah or 
but g g3 is a terrible idea because of knight e2 fratter than queen g1 uh, and here or queen takes g3 that's just mating but yeah there is there is one move and one move only it seems queen d1 here but this wasn't played queen b2 and actually this rook is kind of trap almost trappable we have queen takes e4 where is the rook going so it goes uh, sorry bishop d7 because if rook g5 uh, knight g6 this rook is uh, a nightmare there's queen f4 and it's if it has to go into a self pin that's just horrible so if this position uh, getting into a pin for example this is just very favorable uh, for black this kind of situation white's not doing much um, so knight in this line uh, knight g6 let's just have a look at this again uh, here so if rook e4 instead then queen takes a3 black's absolutely great here this knight's much better than that bishop so anyway um black actually uh sorry sergey played bishop d7 to protect the rook and so there's a neat tactical idea that if white uh plays a rook takes d7 then check is actually going to be it's mating it's mating uh so that disaster has to be avoided and magnus yeah sees that funny enough and um plays g6 so that rook is in trouble here uh, we have rook f6 if rook g5 then it's safe enough just to take on d7 there's no mating stuff so rook f6 and we have now this nudging move knight d3 so white's relying on this queen b8 the queen has to be there so magnus is, magnus is taking out the dependency of this um bishop have it needing queen b8 where's the queen going uh, the queen goes to c3 uh, if queen b1 then queen e5 check and i'm picking up the rook yeah the queen uh, that that is a very nice access that e5 square with this check possibility so queen c3 but um now rook takes d7 is possible we have rook e6 okay but magnus is using this check and the game ended here if it carried on white has to resign here a piece up for black if it carried on with king g2 then check and knight f4 and this is over yeah this is looking at g2 and yeah it's just going to be over that's horrendous so the game ended here after queen f4 check so a really fascinating game there which uh shows that e5 this gaping hole in the opening uh, led up to a kind of mass distraction strategy letting white be lured more for the light squares and, and material on the queen side and if you you know the the, the scenarios where the both knights were attacking the king are just wonderful i believe this is like what you expect from a leela game but magnus played this uh you know he played a very nice continuation there was an even more crushing continuation but it just shows the whole the validity of the whole strategy of giving up both bishops tempting white to use theoretical weaknesses and in doing so using up a ton of resources away from the king if you enjoyed this game video check out that link king's crusher tv slash anti sicilians this will lead you to the fantastic new course by gm alex kolovich so this explains a lot of the anti-Sicilians which will be thrown at you. You just want to play a fun Sicilian and you get all this stuff thrown at you. And you might want to know, you know, what do you do about it? This is just one of the model games actually uh, presented there which supports um, the, the main material is the, the training material. So finding all those amazing resources and plans against this stuff, you might, you know, want a little bit of preparation for these anti-Sicilians. So check that out, Kings Crusher TV slash anti-Sicilians fantastic grandmaster course at Chessable which covers this particular subject okay thanks so much